Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Build. Now, we've been away from Dale for quite some time, but it's good to be back and feels great to be making some more progress. Now, one thing new this episode, which you might have already noticed, is that we're rocking some new graphics. I mean, look at the water there. In this version, you can see it's a very rich and deep blue. But that's not the only thing that's changed. There's a lot more vibrancy to the colors that you see around, and the blacks are much stronger too, and the shadows cast by blocks are much more solid as well. Now, one of the things that sucked about the previous shaders we used was they had a tendency to saturate the landscape, leaving colors looking washed out and pale, while the light rays dancing between buildings were pretty cool. I feel like we've gone for the visually superior option here. The last episode, we hit the amphitheater, which you see now, and between this and the last episode, I've touched up a few areas and fixed a few out of place blocks with it, but for now, it's time to get on with this episode and see what we're building now. Something you mentioned before as well, actually, as you can see here, is that the gravel kind of sucked. It made it look like the whole place was going to be a built-up city, but that's not the case at all. So what I did first thing was replace blocks within, I think, 200 blocks. All the gravel replaced it with grass. So every single scrap of gravel on Dale became grass, and I started to build out the road coming out the back of the amphitheater. Now, I think I mentioned last episode that I wanted the amphitheater to have a kind of garden behind it. So the triangle that we segregated to the right will become a kind of garden that people can go in, sit on a bench, feed the ducks, enjoy the pond, and just generally enjoy nature within this built-up city of Dale. So I put down some trees either side of the back entrance to the amphitheater, underneath those enigmatic faces, and then began to build a two-block thick path that would snake and wriggle around what will become our new park. And you see these kind of star shapes we're doing here with stone slabs? They're going to have trees in the middle of them. So once I'd done all the stars I, I wanted down, I filled a few of them up with dirt, put saplings on them, and then put down, I think, birch trees on top, those white trunked trees. Now again, a cool technique for getting trees taller than they should be is putting down dirt first, then putting a sapling on top of it, growing the sapling with bone meal, and then digging away at the dirt and replacing it with the birch logs. And so now you see here I'm decorating the inside of the garden. And a good technique, if you want to put fences inside a garden, but putting fences bordering around all the paths is a lot of the time too much. So what you can do is you can just go to the corners and the edges and just dash about, splash about fences here and there, just like sections of three or four fences. Rather than have the whole path be covered with fences, this gives the impression of fences being on the path, but doesn't overwhelm the landscape with too much wood. And once those fences were in place and the pond was filled with water, I went around with bone meal and just right clicked on the grass because the best way to put down plants is with bone meal. Now you can go around yourself and put down tall grass, yellow and red flowers on your own. But using bone meal gives you a much more natural appearance because the, uh, well, you let the game decide where the plants are going to go. And the benches I made are made using wooden stairs and wooden hatches on the sides rather than signs. So the park needed entrances and I toyed around with some ideas using sandstone and sandstone steps and wood and I settled on what you see here. Then I went around the edge put chiseled sandstone as fences and filled the gaps between them with wooden fence posts. And there you go, this is our park. I've added a couple of lamps in the middle as well with glowstone, you see them there. And the pond, two benches, splashed around segments of fence. And as we spin around in the center, you can see it all in a little bit more detail. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how this park turned out. So now it was time to come over to the area on the other side of the river, just down from the town hall. Now this is where I'm going to first put down some houses. I didn't want to pick up an area that was too big. And this little strip of land next to the river seemed like the perfect size. So I started to dig along with what would become the seawall. This is going to be the wall that faces, well not the seawall, but the river wall. This is going to be a wall that borders up the river. Now the grass leans out a bit far at the moment. And something I had to be careful with was, was not inhibiting my river too much, not squeezing it too thin and making it look too ugly. Now this is going to be a path that snakes up next to the river, but it also raises in, uh, in altitude slightly, so that every, every few blocks or so I go up a level. And this, this area here is going to be a multi-level tiered 
first housing zone. Once I had the path next to the river completed, I came around the back with some bordering stone brick. And this is basically to guide me out and pen in the area that I'm going to see and build on. Now you see me here using gravel again, and gravel is a great tool because when you plonk it down, it falls naturally through spaces in the air. So spawning in gravel, I created this large area to put down our first few houses on. Now I toyed around with what I wanted to do with the houses. I, I tested out a couple of logs with sandstone, but in the end I settled for wooden logs and standard sandstone bricks. Then began to mark out the structures using those oak logs. Now it looks a bit like a, a join the dots puzzle at the moment without any instructions, but don't worry, in a second I'll be going around and filling those in with sandstone bricks. And here you can see I've started now. And these are going to be the first houses that we put in Dale, our first residential area, so it's quite exciting. Now I'm not sure I'm going to live in one of these houses, I think I'm going to reserve myself a nice big mansion over in the rich district. But first things first, I wanted to put down some housing because I have no idea how I'm really going to approach the housing in Dale. So this first house nearest to the town hall was a first dry run test. Now with the housing I wanted this, the bottom layer, bottom half of the house, to be a certain thickness, but then I wanted to come one block out for the second for the second floor of the house. And you can see me doing that there with the wooden logs at the corners and sandstone and wooden steps bordering the gap between the first and second floors. Now I went for that red nether brick step effect on the roofs. I wasn't quite sure about this because red is quite a vibrant and busy colour and it's very bright. But ultimately it was still vastly superior to wood. And I limited its effectiveness by making it shallower. I didn't use steps, I used half blocks, only keeping the steps for the very edge. Then I came around the front, toyed with a few ideas about how I was going to do the windows and the front door. Finished up by adding some light wooden steps upside down to border the top and bottom floor. Put in a door. Some decorative wooden latches. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted the hatches to go, but once I was happy with those, they went in place. And there we go. This is the first house in Dale. The first place for somewhere to live. Somewhere for some, some guy to live. Maybe me? Well, no. It's a bit of a crappy house for me. I'm going to have something much more grand, I hope eventually. But here you can see this is a rough design for how we're going to do the whole of Dale. Most of the residential places in Dale will look something like this. Then we come over the river and you can see the garden, the nice garden that we can walk through as you come out of the theatre when you've gone there to see Shakespeare, you've enjoyed a nice play, a nice Macbeth perhaps, and you're walking out the back and you think, hey, well I'm going to take my date through the park as you can see here, sit down by the pond and just enjoy and talk about the experience that we had in the theatre. Now next episode what I'll probably try and do is work on the foundations that we already put down across the river. But now that I know how I'm going to build the houses, I can go pretty much anywhere in Dale and start putting down foundations. And that might be a good idea because it will let us see how we're going to build Dale exactly and how, how we can future ourselves and not block ourselves from what we plan. But for the time being I think things are looking pretty good in Dale. And the build seems to be progressing with a decent amount of pace. And, uh, and style. I definitely like the new shaders, but let me know what you think in the comments section, if you like the old shaders, or if you like the new ones. And, uh, and maybe we can switch back if there's a violent, violent disagreement. But I've been Stjin, and this has been Let's Build Erebor and the Town of Dale. Hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.